Coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Sustainability continues to be a very important topic for the entire beef industry. We'll hear from a panel of experts who will discuss sustainability and the impact it's having from the ranch gate to the beef consumer's plate. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hi everybody and welcome to this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Russell Nemitz. Well, protecting and improving the environment has long been the focus of America's foremost land stewards, our farmers and ranchers. I mean, after all, responsible land and natural resource stewardship go hand in hand with a successful and long-term cattle operation. So today, we're going to dig into the topic of sustainability and what it means for you as a beef producer, both now and into the future. We're joined by a great panel of experts who will share their thoughts on this important topic and give us some insight on how this issue will impact the future of the beef cattle industry. First is Jake Fettis of Fettis Red Angus. Jake and his family are our hosts today at this multi-generational operation here in Montana. Alongside Jake is Shaley Harney, the executive director of the Montana Beef Council. Next is Dr. Tryon Wickersham, an associate professor of animal nutrition at Texas A&M. And our final panelist is Clay Bertram, the Federation Division Chair for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association and an Oklahoma cow-calf producer. And Jake, let's go ahead and start with you and talk about why producers like yourself think sustainability is so important. Well, you know, for us, it's a, it's a multi-generational ranch. We want to keep it that way. In order for me to have this to hand off to my kids or have them come into the operation, we need to keep it sustainable. Uh, we're entrusted with this land, um, you know, and, and a lot of ranching is seen as a lifestyle, but it also has to be a viable business. And in order to be a viable business, we need to keep the land sustainable for the health of the ground, the plants, the animals and our future generations of kids. Yeah, absolutely. Clay, as a producer from Oklahoma, maybe describe to our listeners and, and our audience why sustainability is so important to you. Well, Russell, today we have to look at the future, just as Jake said, you know, with our multi-generational ranches. And if we're not uh, sustainable today, we won't be profitable tomorrow. And that's the key to any generation as we look <clears throat> to pass that down to our, our kids and our sons and our daughters as it was passed on to us. And, you know, the key to each of these ranches is being profitable uh, in, these, in these times that we're in right now. You know, with that just said, maybe describe how you've seen the conversation about sustainability evolve or intensify, if you will, over the years. Well, as producers and ranchers, we've been doing this for many, many years as we've as seen it evolve. And it's just become more of the forefront in these past years. As we've looked at our operations and the different things that we've done from rotational grazing, you know, to, uh, the, to the bulls that we select and manure management and the different operations that we do, even on my own ranch in Oklahoma, from the pastures that I select and to the operation that I run and how I manage that operation and I teach that that to the to the people that work for me and the different sustainability programs that we work with in RCS and CSP and EQIP and just the different opportunities that arise when sustainability is talked about and like I stated it's been evolving over years and decades it just hasn't been at the forefront like it is now you know we've seen some issues come and go in the past is this just another flavor of the month if you will another buzzword for the agriculture and livestock industry or is it going to stick around with us for the foreseeable future. No, this is here to stay and we can see that evolving and people talking about it more and more and us as producers we have to be able to share our story and be able to teach that story to the younger generations and even some of the older generations that haven't been willing to share our story and that's what we have to do as producers is to share this enlightening and story that we share as a nutritious wholesome beef product that we're able to produce each and every day. You know, Shaley, as executive director of the Montana Beef Council, you have the opportunity to visit with producers of all different sizes across Montana. When we talk about sustainability from your perspective, is sustainability a fit for all sizes of operations? 
Absolutely, Russell. I think as the saying goes, you can't manage what you don't measure. And ranches of all sizes all across Montana and all across the United States are really focusing on and tracking their progress over the years as they're taking care of their grasses. I mean, ultimately they raise grass. They also raise beef and cattle, but ultimately they have to raise wonderful grasses to, to nourish their cattle and produce the wonderful beef product that we get. So it really does work for all ranches and all sizes, and it just benefits the future so much. Yeah, absolutely. And it sure does. And Tryon, I mean, let's kind of wrap things up in this first segment with you talking a little bit. What are some of the ways that farmers and ranchers are already implementing these sustainable practices? Because really, it's nothing new. And in many cases, it's been something that farmers and ranchers and those of us in agriculture have been doing since day one. Right. That's exactly right. If you look over the last 50 years, we've made substantial progress in terms of decreasing methane emissions, improving production efficiency and the amount of beef produced per animal. Um, so there's lots of opportunity to continue to select for production efficiency. And I think producers are really comfortable talking about that. And this is just a reshaping of a conversation we're used to having and focusing on the environment, social sustainability, and then continuing to look at the economic realities. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there truly are, I mean, all sorts of different aspects and details when we talk about sustainability. Um, within that, though, what are beef producers wanting to know most about sustainability? So I think in general, beef producers want to know what sustainability is. Is it something that is a top down thing? And I'd really encourage them to think about looking at sustainability as an opportunity to continue to improve their operations. and move their operations forward. And we've looked at some mitigation strategies on sustainability to try and reduce some environmental footprints. And all of the ones that were successful at reducing environmental outputs or negative maybe environmental impacts um, also resulted in the producers making more money. So I think that's real positive. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Jake, when we're talking about sustainability, I mean, when you're visiting around uh, with other cattlemen and cattle women, I mean, is it a topic that you bring up or how do you bring it up with other producers so that they too can join in on this important conversation? You know, it's, uh, it's one of those words that a lot of producers don't want to talk about. It's one we need to talk about. And when I'm talking to people, we do, you know, we try to get that conversation rolling. Uh, part of that's genetics. Um, you know, when we're getting ready for our bull sale, we measure average daily gain, dry matter intake, all these different aspects through DNA to try to produce the most efficient animal we can. And a more efficient animal is going to be a more sustainable animal and it's going to create more sustainability on our, on our grasses and our feeds. And, you know, if we can, if we can put less inputs into them, then that makes it more sustainable. So it is, you know, it's a, it's a constant conversation that we're having and, uh, Trying to get some of the older generations to talk about it, like you mentioned earlier, can be difficult, but it's very important. Yeah, it can be. And I just want to wrap up with Clay on this same topic. I mean, in your discussions as you travel around the country now in this current position within CBA, I mean, how important is it for all of us in the U.S. beef cattle industry to talk with a united and strong voice about this important topic of sustainability? Well, it's the number one priority that I have as I travel around and I talk to other producers, not only in my state of Oklahoma, but you know, here we are in Montana and as we travel around and sustainability is the key to being, you know, not only for me being a low cost producer, but Jake here on his ranch. And as we share our story, I can't emphasize that enough, that talk to your other producers and, and we're pushing that down in the, you know, the 4-H, the FFA programs as you talk and, and share that story of, as our producers. And it's something to get excited about. I get excited about on my operation as we continue to talk about that and share that story with producers so that that consumer that goes to get that uh, highly nutritious product that we're all excited about to eat each and every night is that they know how to where that came from. Absolutely. Well, sustainability is the topic of this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, and you can get valuable information on this very topic and how it's impacting the beef cattle industry by visiting the website Beef, It's What's for Dinner, Dot com. Still ahead here on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll dig a little bit deeper into this important issue of sustainability with our great panel of experts. So stay with us. We've got a lot more to discuss right after this. From the very beginning, Richie has been dedicated to one thing, helping people deliver fresh, constant water to their animals. Today's Ritchie waterers rely on a valve design that remains much the same as it was in 1921. It's a simple idea, 
do it right, and the rest will take care of itself. We never set out to create a company that would be around for 100 years. We just wanted to create something great. Welcome back to this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. This week we're digging into the topic of sustainability and examining what it means for you as a beef producer both now and in the future. Of course beef sustainability begins on the farmer ranch so we've asked cattlemen and cattle women from across this great country of ours to share their perspectives on sustainability. Sustainability on the ranch is really important to us. I look at it from two perspectives. Um, my kids are the sixth generation of my husband's family to be on this ranch. So it's really important that we remain profitable uh, down the line so that my kids and my grandkids can come back and be on this ranch. But I think it's also important that we take our environmental responsibility seriously. It's important every day that we are out there trying to improve the land that we're in, um, whether that's the soil health, whether that's wildlife habitat. We, we try really hard to take that seriously every day. To the consumer, I'd like to explain to them that they don't have to worry about their beef choice in terms of sustainability or of animal welfare. That cattle that are out in pasture, they're in their natural environment. They spend the majority of their life in the pasture in natural systems. And the final portion of the life when they're in the feedlot is just a short part of the time. But even at that point, their welfare is the highest regard by the people that are taking care of them. To me, it's doing the right thing. God gave us this land and we, we are the stewards of it and we really need to do the very best that we can to take care of it and to, to pass it on better than what we, you know, you hear that from every farmer and rancher, but it really is the truth. It really is the truth. You wanna pass it on better. You wanna take care of it. You want. You want what's best for the land because what's best for the land is best for the creatures that are on it, whether it's humans or if it's cattle or wildlife or whatever it is. It's in who we are to take care of each other and the earth and it's really important. We need to get the word out to the other 98% of the population that isn't involved in the beef industry and, and teach them the, the benefits of, of beef and what it does not only from a nutrition standpoint but it, from a, an environmental standpoint and a sustainability standpoint on rangelands like this. I wish everybody could drive through the ranch one day and, and just see how it's managed how we're a family operation, how we work hard to provide a quality product for consumers to enjoy. We're back now with our panel of experts and try and maybe describe for us how sustainability is measured and what are some of the factors that are driving how sustainable or unsustainable, if you will, we are as an industry and as individual producers. So the three pillars of sustainability are economic, environmental, and social. We're pretty comfortable at measuring the economic sustainability, that's profitability, and I feel like most producers do a good job at that, or at least try to do a good job at that. If we look at the environmental, um, we're looking at intensities, emission factors. Um, we could also look at land use, um, amount of feed that goes into producing a product. And so generally, what we express that is, is some unit of input or some output divided by how much beef was produced. And so if we want to really improve sustainability, one of the best ways is to improve the pounds of beef produced, increase production efficiency. Um, and then societal is probably the one we have the biggest challenge measuring. It's something, um, even on the academic side, we're not real comfortable with trying to address. And we've started working on creating some ways to look at the societal benefit of beef. But one could be the price of beef in the grocery store. Jake, does focusing on sustainability just add costs or are there other ways to become more sustainable while also becoming more profitable? There's definitely the possibility of becoming more profitable while becoming more sustainable. You know, on our place, for example, through 
a higher intensive uh, rotational grazing process and cover crops, uh, we've increased our carrying capacity about 20% over the last 12 years. Um, and that's not a lot of added labor. You know, we move some more temporary fence uh, more often, but other than that, it's not, we don't have another hired man. We haven't added more costs. We've simply added more, more number of cattle. Um, and, and producing more pounds of beef per acre than what we were before. Absolutely, and that is increasing your bottom line at the end of the day. Shaley, let's talk about how sustainability and if more cattlemen and women uh, begin to adapt and, and encourage more sustainable practices on their farms and ranches, how at the end of the day, it can actually drive more consumers to eating beef. I think you can't turn on the news without hearing about sustainability right now. It's just everywhere. And ranchers have been doing this for years. And if consumers are concerned about sustainability, the beef industry has research and information, years of it, to show how sustainable ranching is and how we're going to continue that for generations and continue to improve our product to continually bring a wonderful beef product to their plate and their menu every single day. You know, Clay, it's a fact that today's consumers in today's society, they love to hear the message of agriculture and where their food is coming from, from producers just like yourself. How does sustainability fit with the Beef Checkoff's goal of building beef demand both at home and internationally? Well, Russell, that's why we're here. The Federation of State Beef Councils, along with our qualified State Beef Council partners, invested in this, in this sustainability project. This is a project that we invested in and we feel uh, that the producers and consumers want to hear about it. And, and that's why we got dollars behind this, uh, this uh, project that we wanted to hear about sustainability. Uh, the checkoff returns that $1 investment for that $11.91 return on your investment in the checkoff dollars. And sustainability is one of those projects that we feel that the producers and consumers need to hear about it. Um, I want to tell my story, Jake wants to tell his story, and we all want to share that story to have that uh, wholesome eating experience that we all want to hear. Uh, from my operation in Oklahoma, I do the same rotational grazing as Jake does here, and we all have those stories that we need to tell back at our home operations. So the, the Federation is solely invested in telling that sustainable story, whether it's from the smallest operation to the largest operations, we need to be willing to share that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when you talk about the beef checkoff, it truly is one of the best and most efficient ways that producers can really have a more impactful and encourage a, a stronger bottom line at the end of the day. Jake, let's talk a little bit about how a producer's sustainability and the practice one day could impact that very profitability that we're all trying to achieve as farmers and ranchers. Well, like we said earlier, you know, we've increased our carrying capacity. I think doing that and we also have about six months a year where we have to feed hay here so by adding cover crops into our into our program uh, and our operation we've been able to cut down how many pounds of hay that we're feeding those cows through the winter which ultimately when we're swathing it baling it we're creating more emissions so if i can do less of that and more grazing it creates you know less less of a carbon footprint that we're producing and also helps uh, helps with our profitability just without having to go out and feed and the extra labor involved. Some great points, Jake. I'm interested though in hearing more from Tryon too on this very subject. What do you think? So the research we've been doing has really looked at different strategies for producers to improve sustainability. And one of the things we were interested in looking at was economic sustainability as well. And in the mitigation strategies we evaluated, especially for the cow-calf producer, the Strategies that had a positive environmental effect also had a positive net return. So it was likely that they would be able to make more money as a result of implementing those practices. One of the other things that came out of that was there's a lot, a lot of regional variability. So what might work well in Montana doesn't necessarily work well in Texas and issues in Montana aren't the same issues that we face in Texas. So I think um, a regional approach makes a lot of sense when you start looking at implementing different mitigation strategies. Yeah, that sounds good. You know, you talked about uh, improving the bottom line. That's on the mind of everyone, right, Clay? Yeah, when you look at that from a personal perspective, from a cow-calf producer, profitability is number one. And you implement those grazing strategies from rotational grazing to the bulls you select, like I mentioned before, profitability is key one. We wouldn't be in this business and we wouldn't be producing that wholesome, nutritious product if we were not profitable today. We talk about lots of different buzzwords in agriculture and, you know, at the end 
end of the day, I mean, sustainability is one of those buzzwords that's not going to go away. And at the end of the day, if we all embrace it, we're gonna be more profitable and deliver a higher quality beef product to consumers. That's right, and it's about building beef demand, and that's what we're all here for. We don't just sell cattle, we're here about building the beef demand and building the beef, the beef alliance of what we're talking about. And sustainability is here to stay, and that's why we're here. All right, still to come here on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll talk about the perception that consumers have on the beef industry and why it's so important to engage in conversations about sustainability. So don't go away, we'll have more right after this. If you need a stock trailer built to stand strong in tough country, you need a Big Ben trailer. Designed and used by a family that runs cattle themselves. I think one of the things that, that makes Big Ben different is that I don't know of any other trailer manufacturer that actually ranches for a living and we get first-hand use, we get to know what works and what doesn't work and if we find something that makes our life easier, we'll do it and design it into our trailer. Big Ben trailers are packed with features. Well-designed latches, movable gates, LED lights and an inch and a half gap around the edges for easy cleanup. Year after year, they keep building Big Ben trailers better. Without a doubt, they're 10 times better than, than they were 25 years ago. Lots of options and features and user-friendly options that we have now that they didn't have back in the day. Ranch tough at a fair price. Find out more at BigBenTrailers.com. Cattlemen and women are dedicated to managing their land and cattle in a sustainable way. They want to leave a legacy for future generations. For more than 30 years, the Environmental Stewardship Award has worked to honor these caretakers of the land and to share their stories. To find out more and to learn how you can nominate a farm or ranch for the Environmental Stewardship Award, visit the website environmentalstewardship.org. Welcome back to this special edition of Cattlemen to Cattlemen as we talk more with a group of experts about the topic of beef industry sustainability. And Shaley, let's uh, dive a little bit further into this important topic and maybe describe what some of the perceptions are with folks outside of the industry when it comes to beef industry sustainability. Well, through our national contractor with NCBA, they've done a lot of research, continue to do research with consumers uh, to understand how they feel about sustainability and learning, showing different videos and different practices to see their feedback on that. And we've learned a variety of things from them thinking that sustainability means shelf life, you know, what that little label says on your yogurt and uh, to, to actual, you know, production practices on the ranch. So we continue to, to see and hear how important it is to tell that story to the consumer and get ranchers out there. I, I'm just a staff person, but having that rancher out there to share that story and get that cowboy hat in front of those consumers to hear from them about their actual sustainability practices because consumers, anyone, I, I don't care how much you know unless I know how much you care. So we, we're helping share that story and help them with talking points or best management practices, anything that we can do to make sure that they have a sustainable future. Yeah, there really are a wealth of resources available on this very topic when it comes to educating and helping our cattlemen and cattlewomen tell that story. Dr. Wickersham, I'm interested in hearing your perspective and some of your observations. I think the biggest misconception consumers have is that the U.S. beef industry is the worst from a sustainability standpoint, when in fact we're probably the most sustainable beef industry in the world in terms of our ability to produce beef on a smaller and smaller land resource with fewer and fewer cows and fewer and fewer emissions and do so at a cost-effective level that the consumer can still enjoy our product. Yeah, and somewhere in this great message that we're trying to uh, create more awareness about, it's also important to let folks out there realize that when we talk about sustainability, it doesn't matter how small you are or how large you are, this sustainability word fits sizes of all operations. That's absolutely correct. I mean, from the biggest cow-calf producer, largest feedlot, sustainability matters to everyone. And the smallest cow-calf producer, you know, small cow-calf producers make up the largest segment of the industry. And there's where we probably have the largest potential gains is in terms of improving those producers' sustainability will allow the entire industry that follows that calf all the way through its, the rest of its life. So anything producers can do, even if they have 10 cows, 
anything they can do to increase the number of calves born alive, number of calves weaned, how much they weigh at weaning, and just produce a quality product really adds to sustainability across the entire industry. Yeah, it sure does. Shaley, when we talk about producers telling that important story of what they're doing on their farms and ranches, how important is it for the beef industry to fight to correct any misinformation about cattle and maybe their impact on our environment. It's very important, Russell. We have to continue to tell that story. And I know, I feel like we've been saying it for years, but from a staff perspective, when I'm out there talking to consumers at grocery stores or at barbecue cook-offs, it's such an important message. And having that rancher tell those real stories about the, the improvement practices that they've made over the years on their ranch is so important to share that with consumers, again, to make sure that they feel comfortable and confident in the product because the rancher is serving their, their same product to their family and they want you to feel comfortable and confident in that product as well. I, I want to know that when I feed my family that beef that it came from a great source and caring, loving and continual sustainability and that is happening and we can share that story. And Clay, this important story can't be told enough, right? No, and you don't have to have you know, the great big platform. It can be just driving down the road and you're talking to your neighbor or, or you're just at the coffee shop, you go have your, you know, where you meet your neighbors each morning. Um, but it's critical that we do it. The best way we learn is we learn from each other. You know, what are we doing? You know, in my business, I have the opportunity to meet, you know, multiple clients throughout the year and, and see and hear different practices. You know, here I am in Montana and I'm learning from Jake and what he does it here, you know, and, and, and Dr. Wiggersham, what he does in his practice. And so we all just need to learn from each other, and that's what the benefit of, of learning and hearing this, this about sustainability is. Yeah, Jake, let's, uh, let's come to you for just a minute. Uh, in addition to that great Red Angus high-quality beef you're raising right here in Montana's Gallatin Valley, your family has also just kind of jumped off into a new endeavor. So you're kind of working both sides of the industry and getting to, to experience what it's like to sell high quality beef to consumers. Uh, how important is it then to tell that great story of what you folks are doing on this particular operation? Well, Russell, like Shaley said, it's, it's vitally important. Um, like you said, a year ago, we purchased a meat shop, a butcher shop about five miles from here. And we opened up a retail spot there and I get customers, consumers in there all the time, all day long. And, and when I'm up there talking with them, they, they wanna know how that local beef is raised. Uh, you know, we, we offer grass fed, grain fed, and I've even offered to have some of them come out to the ranch and I've had three of them take me up on it and just, just drive around the ranch and look at what we're doing. And, and they're just shocked, you know, and, and a lot of them are out of state consumers. So they're not familiar with what we're doing in Montana as far as sustainability and ranching goes. And when they see it, they just have, they have no idea you know those practices are taking place and that's what we're doing and and it does it just builds confidence in in their mind in that nutritious product that we're selling them well and by not helping to answer some of those questions we're we're truly missing an opportunity aren't we oh, and yeah. i I think we have a great opportunity here for state beef councils and, and for all of the checkoff resources that we do have for producers, just to remind that we have all of those resources at our office, whether it's sustainability fact sheets or beef cut charts or recipes and inspiration to help consumers understand and hear that story. And so we're able to provide those to all of our ranchers that are venturing into direct to consumer sales and continue to share that positive story with research backed and scientific information. And Clay, when we talk about consumer confidence, how important is it on a topic like sustainability for the overall sustainability of America's beef cattle industry? Well, I think this last year proved our point and we saw through the empty shelves, through the pandemic, you know, consumers were reaching out to small producers such as myself, such as Jake, you know, how can we get that right off the farm, wholesome, lean product that we all enjoy? Shaley mentioned all the resources uh, from the state beef councils, from the Federation, um, that there's a wealth of resources out there on this topic of sustainability that we can provide for you as farmers and ranchers. You know, I'm gonna wrap this segment up with Dr. Wickersham and, and as a professor at Texas A&M University, like the rest of us, you have the opportunity to travel around the country and, and present messages like this and help educate others along the way. But what's it like visiting with all those young people that do share the same passion for the most part for what we do in our livelihoods? Uh, what are some of the questions that they have as far as how they're gonna help us tell this great story? 
So I think the younger people are generally more comfortable with the conversation of sustainability. They've kind of bought in, if you want to use that word, to sustainability and that it matters. And so they almost have the expectation now that when we talk about nutrition, that it relates back to sustainability and so they can think about it. I think the other thing that's really important is they recognize probably better than maybe the older generations do that someone's going to tell the story, right? And someone's going to fill that information void and they want to play a role in filling that information void. And I think they want help in that regard too, helping help older generations tell that story and fill that void, but they also want to do it themselves as well. So, Kind of goes back to that old adage, doesn't it? That if we don't tell our story, somebody else might tell it for us and we might not like the story they're delivering. Now, if you have questions about beef industry sustainability, or maybe just need some facts to help answer consumer questions, just visit beefitswhatsfordinner.com. Still to come, we'll talk about the valuable environmental benefits that cattle provide when they're on the land. So stay with us. We'll have more right after this. For commercial cow-calf producers, crossbreeding with Gelvy and Balancer is the smart, reliable, and profitable choice. Gelvy and Balancer females offer maternal superiority through increased fertility, greater longevity, and more pounds of calf weaned per cow exposed. In the feed yard, Balancer cattle deliver increased performance, improved feed efficiency, and excellent carcass merit. Balancer adds the pounds, make the grade, and deliver the value. Gel V and Balancer, the smart, reliable, and profitable choice. Find out more at the website gelvy.org. Nasalgen 3 is a new three-way intranasal BRD vaccine that offers young calves unrivaled protection against devastating respiratory diseases, including IBR, BRSV, and PI3. And it has a unique blue shadow, so there's no second guessing which animals have been vaccinated. To up your protection, choose new Nasalgen 3 PMH, the first and only five-way intranasal vaccine on the market. Talk to your veterinarian and visit nasalgen.com to learn more. If you're looking for the best in cattle industry news, information, and education, then don't miss NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Each week we cover important topics such as herd health and cattle handling, plus updates with congressional and industry leaders about today's top policy issues, and stories shot on location at cattle farms and ranches around the country. Don't miss NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen on RFD-TV and on YouTube. And welcome back to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen as we continue our discussion about beef industry sustainability with our great panel of experts. And Dr. Wickersham, let's have you tell us a little bit more about the term upcycling now and what it means when it comes to beef cattle producers. So we actually coined the term protein upcycling to help consumers really understand um, the magic of the ruminant and how beef cattle work. And so what we really wanted to describe was the fact that cattle, through their symbiotic relationship with ruminal microbes, can take feedstuffs, grass um, byproducts from other industries, whether that's food or fuel production, and they can convert those nutrients into high quality beef that we enjoy consuming. And so these rumen microbes provide them with the enzymes and the capacity to digest cellulose and grass, and then convert that into amino acids. And when they do that, they actually improve the amino acid profile of the feed they're consuming. So if we look at corn, corn has a relatively low amino acid profile. It's not a great source of amino acids for us. It's very difficult for us to meet our amino acid requirements with corn. In fact, if we tried to, we'd end up um, severely obese. And what cattle do because of this relationship with microbes is they improve those amino acids so they can more directly meet our amino acid requirements. So we actually end up consuming fewer calories by consuming beef to meet our amino acid requirements as well as the other requirements for vitamins and minerals. I think it's interesting, Russell, when we're talking about upcycling, 86% of the feed that cattle consume in the U.S. are inedible by humans. And so, you know, that just really tells that upcycling story that we can take those byproducts and cattle can upcycle them to create an, an incredibly nutritious and, and tasty product for us to consume. And Shaley, I want to come to you on this same topic because uh, 
state beef councils like the Montana Beef Council are helping to educate not just cattle producers but also consumers within this whole big topic of sustainability about upcycling. That's right, and we talk about beef nutrition and beef sustainability. You know, there are 10 essential nutrients in beef. That's not nice to have nutrients, those are essential. And the way that we're able to upcycle those into a wonderful, nutritious multivitamin to eat, you can't go wrong. So it's a great story that we have to tell. And Clay, it's also another opportunity for cattle producers like yourself and everyone else to engage with the consumer when a topic like upcycling is brought up. Yeah, it just gives us another opportunity to share our story to that consumer about what sustainability is and the wholesome, nutritious uh, benefits of beef. And it's kind of one of those terms or those words, I guess, is a better way to put it, that is out there now in society, especially with some of our younger generation. Um, Jake, I mean, it's something, though, that you're doing right here in, in the Gallatin Valley. We take a lot of byproducts. Uh, there's a lot of potatoes in this valley. Uh, and people don't know that we can feed potatoes to cattle. Uh, any potatoes that don't get sold, we mash up and feed to cattle, great source of fiber. Otherwise, they dig a hole and put them in the ground. So we, we can reuse those products without having to just throw them away and having a lot of waste. I like to think of beef as the tastiest multivitamin. I mean, you take all of this wonderful, nutritious grass and upcycle it through uh, that wonderful beef product that we get and have just the best tasty multivitamin that there is out there. And Clay, believe it or not, there's still a segment of our population out there that think food just naturally appears on our grocery store shelves and high quality beef, they need to be reminded, comes from the cattle and livestock that are grazing these forages. That's right. And we're still here to produce that wholesome beef product that we all love and enjoy. And that's what we're here to do. From Jake's product to my product, from Montana to Oklahoma, we have that wholesome product that we enjoy. Dr. Wickersham, I know the answer, these guys know the answer, but please tell us how cattle can actually improve the land. So I think an important thing to keep in mind is that most of the places we run cattle or graze cattle were grazed by large ruminants historically, right? And that would, in the Great Plains primarily be bison, but throughout the country where we graze cattle, those animals existed for eons and having large ruminants is a part of the natural ecosystem. It's a part of grass management, forage management. It helps with wildlife habitat for other, um, other creatures. And then the other thing um, at some level is as long as we continue to ranch and run cattle on land, it also prevents it from being fragmented and losing open spaces, which are really important and crucial to wildlife and just that overall ecosystem in general. Russell, you have to remember that 29% of the land here in the United States, you can't uh, grow crops on it. So we have to do something with that land, like run cattle, and that's where we use that land for. So let me go back to Dr. Wickersham for just a minute here. I mean, does cattle upcycling have an impact on sustainability of other industries? So I think um, Jake brought up a good point with the potato waste, right? It becomes a waste product if cattle don't exist. And so um, we can look at a lot of different products. If we didn't feed distiller's grains, they'd have to find some other alternative and that might look like burning them, which um, negatively would negatively affect the sustainability of fuel production. And on the potato side, it would negatively affect the sustainability of potato production. So um, beef cattle is utilizers of these um, other co-product streams or maybe um, we might even think of them as waste streams if the cattle didn't exist. We can call them co-products only because the cattle exist and can use those. And that comes from fuel as well as food production that um, cattle derive a great percentage of their nutrients. Yeah, and depending on where you, you're raising your cattle, I mean, each operation might have their own unique set of circumstances to take advantage of, right? Um, let's talk a little bit more with Shaley then. In what ways are state organizations working to get ahead of the conversation on sustainability? Well, the Montana Beef Council works in a number of different ways, but we partner with organizations like the Montana Stock Growers Association with the Environmental Stewardship Award Program, which really highlights and honors ranchers that are having those best management practices and gives us the opportunity to really show them as a champion for the industry and for sustainability practices. And to take that one step further, then we take a tour on that ranch and bring together chefs and uh, from food service industry as well as media to bring them on that ranch and that operation for experiential learning to see, feel, understand, get to see, get very close to cattle and see that whole operation and help them understand where food comes from, how much they 
care for the product that they're producing and really bring that conversation all together and bring them together so that they can again feel that care for the product that we're producing and just see it really strongly together and see that partnership and of course we utilize uh, research materials and sustainability materials from the national office to make um, all of it more impactful. Well, over the years, I've been lucky enough to be on some of those tours, and it's pretty amazing to see the non-ag folks that you invite out to participate and, and almost the transformation, if you will, when you get them out there and they get to experience firsthand. Absolutely, we have a lot of pasture to plate tours or farm station ag day tours, and we're able to help with those across the state as well, where again, we're bringing youth in uh, to understand and see ag operations and experience farm and ranching and learn just where their food comes from and then understanding the nutritional benefits of, of beef and all of the wonderful products that we're able to produce here in Montana. And Clay, we've been talking about the tours and the environmental recognition that goes on here in Montana, but Montana is just one of the state where this sort of thing is going on. I mean, all across this great country of ours, I mean, similar things are happening where we have that opportunity to tell our story in front of non-farmers and ranchers. Yeah, and that's why the Federation with like Shaley and our State Beef Council partners is so, and this has become on the forefront just this year that we decided to put the money behind the sustainability project. And that's like we've talked before, that's why we're here to put this at the forefront in front of our consumers and not only our consumers, but our producers, showing them the avenues and the ways that we have to share our story and talk to the consumers and the producers about what sustainability is and how they can get involved. Because you don't have to start at any time of the year. You can start today about being sustainable and learning about the practices that you can do on your own operation. And Jake, that really resonates across the, in the entire spectrum. As we mentioned earlier, your family now is operating a meat shop, so to speak. And so you get to hear it when you're out in the, the countryside, uh, helping others uh, market their cattle, or when you come back to the meat shop and hear it from the consumer perspective about where their food and fiber is coming from. Yeah, it's really interesting to hear it from both sides. Uh, as you mentioned, I, I'm a cattle broker too, so I visit with a lot of people in the five state region around around here. And uh, just talking about sustainability in different environments, you know, South Dakota, North Dakota have a much different environment, even, even Eastern Montana than what we have here. So discussing how they are promoting sustainability and how they're trying to make their operations more sustainable. I wanted to touch on one thing Shaylee said too. She was talking about uh, tours and stuff with young people. My wife's a fourth grade teacher here in the Valley and Montana Beef Council supports what we have here in the Valley called Farm Fair. And every fourth grader in this Valley gets to go to Farm Fair and they roll cans to make ice cream, they get to milk a cow, they learn about beef, they learn about chickens and, and pork production. And it is an incredible, incredible event that they put on and really teaches those kids about agriculture. You know, and a lot of kids that have no background in it, don't have any idea what we do. And that's just a, a really neat program that they help support. Yeah, oh my gosh, how important is it to reach those younger generation like those fourth graders? And Shaley, that's just another great example of what checkoff dollars and producers' investments are doing in states like Montana and across the entire nation for that matter. That's absolutely right. We have a current sustainability campaign running all across the nation and all of the other 44 state beef councils were all coordinating efforts together to really bring the beef team up front and bring the beef sustainability story to the, the forefront, whether it's through uh, digital advertising, television advertising, radio, interviews, bringing that producer out there. We're sharing that story through a coordinated effort through our work with the Federation of State Beef Councils and all of our state beef councils to share that sustainability campaign and get that message out there, whether it's through the environmental stewardship program and highlighting those ranchers, or even the beef quality assurance program that is also funded by the beef checkoff to really show consumers the best management practices that are in place and then help ranchers tell that story. So important, so important. And when we talk about sustainability and other buzzwords, if you will, like upcycling, uh, something that we shouldn't uh, run away from or be scared of, but rather take the message home, learn how to embrace it, and then apply it on your farms and ranches, and then ultimately provide that consumer out there with a high quality beef product. Coming up next here on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, what resources are available for producers who want to improve their sustainability? Well, our experts will help answer that question and more when we come back. Grass is the center of our universe. 
We've got to have a grass program that we can count on and plan on. That's what we need to sustain us, to keep us growing, to keep us prospering. When the field is your office, you never get tired of going to work. Cut, rake, bail, repeat. New Holland offers the power and versatility to get through the day. From small squares to large squares and everything in between, New Holland has you covered. Visit your local dealer today to find out more. New Holland. Cattle producers across the country work hard to care for their animals and their land. The USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service is there to help. Find out how you can work with NRCS to develop a conservation plan for your operation. Find possible funding resources for implementing conservation practices or get free expert advice on ways to improve your farm or ranch. Visit the website nrcs.usda.gov today. Welcome back to NCBA's Kettleman to Kettleman, where today we're highlighting the issue of sustainability and what it means for beef cattle producers. And Clay, when we talk about the topic of sustainability, what sort of resources and tools are available for both producers and consumers on the national level? Well, not only your fellow producers, but Cattlemen's College, uh, you got your extension resources programs through the NRCS like CSP, Equip, um, but you know I would say from a personal standpoint the resources of your fellow producer, you know just like Jake here, talk to those fellow producers about what uh, what you can do to be sustainable. Maybe you can come up with a new way that might work on each other's ranch. Absolutely, and Shaley, what about the state level? Some of those ranch tours that I've been on, uh, ranchers love to go on them because they love to hear from other ranchers and get new ideas and share that information. It's just so beneficial. But from a, a state beef council level, we have a number of resources and we offer you know, trainings for speaking skills and building those opportunities so they can help or whether it's writing letters to the editor or they just need a quick fact or information to help respond to something that they saw online or in the news or they have a neighbor that has a question or a relative from out of town that's coming. We are your resource for all things beef and all that information to help producers tell their story and help consumers feel confident in their product. And those are some great resources, by the way. Jake, what's your message to people in the beef industry that hope that the subject of sustainability might just go away someday? It's never going to go away. It's here to stay. Uh, we need to need to really focus on that and and talk about our sustainability and realize that if we don't tell our story somebody else is going to tell it and chances are we're not going to like the way they tell it uh, there's a lot of organizations out there that would would like to see us not producing beef anymore and they are telling a story full of misinformation about what we do and and how we can help in the sustainability uh, segment of our industry and Dr. Wickersham, your message? I'd absolutely agree with what Jake said. And I think, you know, it's not going to go away. It's going to continue. And I believe ultimately it makes the beef industry a better industry. It makes us more efficient. Um, allows us to take better care of the resources we've been entrusted with. So it'll be around for a while. It sure will. Stay with us. We'll be back to wrap up our show right after this. We didn't just design the 6M tractors with you in mind. We designed them with you by our side. The new 6M tractors from John Deere, reimagined by you, for you. With improved visibility, better maneuverability, and more ways to customize, so you get everything you need and nothing you don't. Experience the new 6M at your local John Deere dealer. We know you're up before the dawn because the cattle rise before the sun. And you spend long hours in the saddle because the herd isn't always over the next rise. And you care for the land because you know it takes care of your family. And we know you do great work. And it's time to tell that story to the marketplace. IMI Global is here to help you do just that. 
Did you know that Prefert makes over a thousand different farm, ranch, and rodeo items? And now, thanks to Prefert Direct, it's easier than ever before to get access to every item Prefert makes delivered direct to your local dealer. For more information about Prefert Direct, visit us at prefert.com. Prefert, America's number one name in farm, ranch, and rodeo. And welcome back. As we wrap up our program this week on sustainability in the beef cattle industry, I'd like to get one final thought from our host today, Jake Fess. Thanks, Russell. Yeah, you know, as we've talked, sustainability is a conversation that's being had uh, by consumers, by the media, and it's our job to, to get involved, share our story. Uh, as the saying goes, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And so we really need to be out there pushing our story and telling consumers and working with other producers and, and seeing how we can be as sustainable as possible. The upcycling story of, of cattle and ruminants is an incredible story that most people don't know. And we really need to be pushing that out there and, and letting consumers know that we are a sustainable industry creating the most nutritious and, and best tasting protein source out there. Absolutely. Well, once again, thank you for hosting us and thank you to the rest of our panelists for sharing a lot of great insight onto this very important topic, sustainability for America's beef cattle industry. Don't forget, you can check out Beef It's What's For Dinner's website for things like recipes, nutritional information, and even stories about producers who are committed to caring for their land as well as their animals. You'll have an amazing interactive experience at this one-stop shop for all things beef. Well, that wraps up this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, funded by the Federation of State Beef Councils. Thanks again to our panel for their insights on beef sustainability, and thanks to you for watching. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.